A PC, a compass, a diving watch, a bang stick that hangs between my crotch, my weight belt snorkel, prescription mask, my super jet bins. I go real fast, I go real fast, I go real fast. I'm a scuba diver and it's a gas. All right, let's tear into the Mark V. I know what you're thinking. It's not a Mark V. You'd be right. It's a Mark I. One high pressure port, one low pressure port, very compact, but inside it's flow through piston. It's all Mark V. This was uh, what a lot of folks say is a leftover from the Healthways days, and it, it has some similarities because it uses the old style thin Healthways yoke and the small screw with the you know the small threads on it it's a really neat regulator and uh, you know I think if they had stayed with Healthways Healthways would be you know renowned for having the uh, one of the best flow through balanced piston regulators uh, ever made but neat little neat little regulator but uh, the thinner yoke probably relegates it to use on low pressure cylinders uh, you, you, even though it wouldn't bother me but just to err on the safe side uh, next up, and the one that most everybody will recognize as a Mark V, is one of the early ones with a high pressure port and the two port low pressure swivel. This one uh, must have been a, a later one because it's got the 3000 PSI yoke on it. Good sturdy yoke, great regulator, a little limited by the swivel. Um, and the swivel on this one does not attach with a nut, it attaches with a clip, which is no problem. It can certainly be reused, but it will you know, rebuild pretty well the same. Here's one that most everyone will recognize as a Mark V. Heavy yoke, swivel pistons. This one's got two high pressure ports on it, so I think this is a Mark or a Series 2. Sorry, I'm certainly not qualified to be a scuba pro uh, historian and don't claim to be by any stretch. So, And the last one I've got here is, I believe this is a Series 2, but I'm a little confused. It's got the nylon saddle, but it's got the uh, metal thumb screw. I thought the ones with the nylon saddle all had the nut or the you know the plastic knob but I could be wrong this one's also got the spec cap which can you know you fill with uh, silicone grease which is used in uh, uh, low temperature environments so um, well with that with that said I give you a little overview we're gonna work with this one because uh, this is a customers that sent it to me and I might as well do two things at once do the video and uh, rebuild the regulator all at once before we get to tearing it down, I want to mention that um, you need a bench vise, and I've taken the liberty to loosen some of these fittings up so I can stay here, and it makes it easier for me to explain rather than me dragging this whole video monstrosity back and forth to the the bench vise. But uh, primary tool you're going to need, really no way around it, is a really complicated cool tool called a threaded rod. It's three eighths for the low pressure fittings on one end. 7 16 on the other. Some of them come in in hexagonal, some of them are just smooth. Either way, they both work fine. I've got them in the website store, they're available a lot of places. Reason in being you need this is because there's three really pieces of heavy lifting you got to do to get into this regulator, and you need to keep it secure in the vise so it can't move so that other tools that you're using against it, you know, don't slip, uh, mar the finish, or you know, uh, do damage to your knuckles uh, as you're doing it. So, uh, I, I tear I tear it down uh, the the big pieces in, in three steps um, using the uh, seven sixteenths end. You're going to loosen the 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 yoke nut itself. Now, ideal tool is a thin one inch socket with a breaker bar, which holds it. Uh, just as it should be while it's in the vise. And you can screw the thumb screw down on top of it. It holds it very securely. It's uh, very easy to turn. 
barring that, you can use Mr. Tool, but be sure that it is close fitting and that you have it in the proper direction when you're removing it. We'll go ahead and, while we're doing that, remove this. Uh, let me stop and say, uh, I even made a note for myself to say this, but I didn't. As you're starting to take parts off of it, I think it's a good idea to print out the schematic. And then each part you take off of it, just where you can, especially the O-rings, just lay it over that part on the schematic so when you go back to, you know, put the parts back in, it'll make it a little easier to remember things. But we'll go ahead and continue on. Unscrew the yoke nut. This one you can see had a spec cap on it. It's really packed full of grease. So set, set it aside. Remove the O-ring. The nut will drop out. And then what, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pry out this star washer here. And we're not going to reuse it. So you know, you're, not, you're not losing anything by just prying it out. Then you'll have filter, should come right out, and you can clean yours up or reuse the one that comes in the kit. This one, uh, normally there's a number 12 O-ring that backs that up. It basically is just a little buffer for the star washer. It's not in there, but no big deal. The second part is to take the high pressure cap off. And there's multiple ways to do this. the scuba pro tool fits in here like so when you have when you're removing it be sure that that's clamped solidly in a vise so it can't tip because you're going to need to apply pressure to it as you turn now Herman also makes a uh, inexpensive tool in comparison to the rather expensive uh, scuba pro tool uh, to remove this you can also use a pin spanner but the pin spanner's got to have a very fine uh, points to it so be sure it fits correctly but this simply unscrews that was off that one's been in a while I haven't seen a blue seat in a while remove the o-ring from it Now your high pressure seats in there, and they're usually in there pretty solid. There's a hole on the back side of them. And it's very easy with just uh, some compressed air to blow that out. I've got this hooked to, hooked to a first stage through a, a BCD hose. And just put that up against there and hold your hand against it. Let it catch it in your palm, otherwise you're going to lose it. And there's your high pressure seat. Wow, take a look at this one. They have tried to reuse that one multiple times. Wow, okay. Okay, let's set that aside. Now the next part we're going to take apart is the piston cavity. And what you need to remove this is the correct spanner to fit the body. And you can see this particular spanner I have here can be adjusted up or down to fit the curve of it. The actual scuba pro size tool, one side curve fits the Mark 5, the other side's for the skinnier Mark 10. Or you can use this type of pin spanner which is more of a, a, a universal adjustable. Be sure it fits solidly in the hole. Be sure you get plenty of, uh, you know, that it's fitting and close. And when you have it in the vise, you want to have it secured as tightly as possible so as you're turning it, unscrewing it, it doesn't tip. So, clean up my work area here a little bit. Then you go ahead and screw the, unscrew it, and as you pull it out, there we go. Set this aside for just a second, and then grab the piston like so and just work it back and forth it'll come out. Now 
This one is really, it's really hard to see on this one because it's packed full of uh, the system grease. As you pull the spring off the piston and set it aside, look around the base of your piston and it's not always easy to see because uh, they're translucent. Uh, if there's a spacer washer there, be sure you keep hold of that with your piston. Remove the o-ring, set it aside. Now, piston is a crucial part of these regulators. They're very scarce, so you kind of treat this one a little bit like a porcelain Jesus and set it aside. Don't mix it up with anything when you're cleaning it. We'll cover that a little later. On the underside where we pulled the piston out, look, see if there is not a in this area here, and like I said, sometimes they're translucent and hard to see if there is a spacer there. And if there is, set it aside, making note of, of whether there was a spacer on the shaft of the piston or on top of the spring. So, set this aside for just a sec. Now, turret bolt. Turret bolt on the early regulators was made from chrome plated brass. There a lot of rumor, you know, what have you. Uh, a lot of times that chrome plated brass turret bolt was over torqued or over tightened when the regulator was reassembled and caused them to weaken. Scuba Pro did an update and made them out of stainless and you know specified torque procedures, which you should be using anyway, but um, I recommend if you find that the one that you have in your regulator is chrome plated brass. If you don't know the history of the regulator and don't know, you know, if it's ever been removed or if it's been improperly torqued, I recommend you replace it with a stainless steel one just to be sure. Now another note on these, you'll notice how thin it is. And you're going to remove it with a socket, but a lot of times on a standard socket, let me see if I can get this where you can see it either. On most sockets, the entrance to the socket is tapered. So there's very little clearance in there, and so if you have a really loose fitting socket, it's very easy for this to twist out or not to grab. So the solution to that is, and you can certainly do this homemade or you can ask Herman for one, get an inexpensive socket, you know, junk bin, what have you, and grind it down flush. So when this engages, even though it's going right up against the space, the, the turret washer, you've got a real good grip on that. So it'll make more sense when I show it to you here. We got like so. Put our socket in. Ratchet handle. And I'll cover the torque sequence when we get to reassembling. There we go. Now this one, this is a later Mark V, so I know that that one is a stainless uh, steel turret bolt. You can usually tell because you can see uh, uh, on the chrome plated brass ones where the the, the uh, little bit of flash left over from the chroming process, you can usually brass is pretty evident around there. So next is pry apart and inside where the piston rides there's a washer. It's an nylon washer. Don't throw that away. Don't lose it. We need to reuse it. Not that at this point everybody's throwing anything away, but let's just be sure. Now, picture time. Another crucial part of the Mark V uh, that really deter other than the piston that really determines how well it seals up is the washer that's in this area right here which is in here we'll take it out in a sec it's a dynamic washer so it means in a nutshell in my caveman terms uh, it seals against a part that's in motion which is the piston here and that piston cycles against the that dynamic o-ring in there you know, 20, 25, 30 times you know a minute. Uh, you have a couple other dynamic o-rings as showed on this on this nice drawing which you can download this. Uh, the swivel, the dynamic because it's working as it swivels and of course the piston shaft or the piston head as it's you know it's moving up and down in the in the piston cavity here. 
But when we remove this O-ring, you need to be extremely careful that you don't use anything uh, made out of stainless or steel or anything. You've got to remove that captive O-ring in there in the gland with a brass pick or a plastic pick, uh, what have you, because if you scratch up the gland area in there, it, it, it quite often throws off the seal in there. And uh, you, no matter what you do after that, well, if that gland area is damaged, you probably are not going to get this regulator to hold IP and it, you know, it's going to end up being a paperweight. So let's set that aside. Now that I got all the scare tactics in there, let me see if I can do it. Inside, and uh, I'm sorry it's not very well lit, but you could probably tell from the illustration, you just need to reach down in here with your brass pick. And it may, and this one I've never taken out before, obviously, so it may take me just a sec. But I'll show you once I get it started. Well, it's going to give me a fit, so I'm going to have to go to another one. And a lot of times, you know, these have hardened over the years, so it may actually break up, which I think this one is going to. So bear with me one sec. Yeah, you can kind of see a little bit that the I'm actually breaking up the O-ring as I'm taking it out. If they've been serviced any time, you know, recently, that O-ring will uh, will come out in one piece. But such as the uh, chance of doing it on video. All right. Well, I've got part of it out here. There we go. That one broke. And, I'll, and I'll, when we go to reassembly, I'll cover real careful how to get that one back in there. But obviously, that one's chunk. All right, now we've got our major components apart. Like I said, these parts, what we've got here, are what we're going to clean in, you know, carefully. And I'll cover in the next video, but. Uh, I hope that kind of give you a little better idea about the teardown. And like I say, printing out the schematic and having those drawings makes it, uh, makes it much easier. And those are available in the uh, website download section. So you can uh, kick it off with those. All right, we are on to cleaning.